do you know what you are? Welcome to the pride and the dignity and the love and respect that we had for one another. Where did you go? And how? How do we get it back? Ain't got no culture, ain't got no culture, ain't got no culture, ain't got no culture. And everybody says that you once said or alluded to black Americans not having any culture. So they were like, well, wait a second. Ain't got no culture, ain't got no culture, ain't got no culture, ain't got no culture. What happened to the pride and the dignity and the love and respect that we had for one another? Where did you go? And how? How do we get it back? Young black men must take your place. The focal point of the matter at hand is not so much to focus on the toils of the so-called black American throughout history but rather to analyze the reoccurring need for the so-called black American to prove themselves and define who they are, who we are, in spite of narratives coming from out of nowhere that pose challenges to the notion that we are a people of culture, many cultures, and unique identities. And despite how inconvenient that may be for those who aim to benefit from a disorganized collective of individuals that don't know their left from their right, we aim to set the record straight. Because truth be told, we are the culture, but not the only culture. But the historical record will show that we are definitely the culture that has greatly impacted on nearly every other culture in America, and also the world. So we'll begin this journey by examining comments that a popular African artist was alleged to have made. Burner Boy. But there's one quote that's been inescapable for you at this point, and everybody says that you once said or alluded to black Americans not having any culture. So they were like, well, wait a second. Why is he wearing shoes that look like Tim's and sampling an American song if black Americans have no culture? Does that even sound like, does that sound like something, if you, if you read, if you watch the video of the interview or whatever, the little, whatever. Clip. Which, if you can show me the part where I said <laughs> that black Americans have no culture, if you can just that's all I need. If somebody can just show me that part, <laughs> there's nothing I said that Malcolm X didn't say, mm. there's nothing I said that Louis, the Honorable uh, Louis, uh, Louis Farrakhan didn't say. But obviously, it's Bernard Boy saying it, and he's from Africa, and you know what I mean? It's like, and it fits the agenda for your little group or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? It's like, oh, that's beneath me. So if those were not the comments that he made, then what did he actually say that caused the outrage? Well, there was this video clip. So I'm here with a man himself, the African giant Burner Boy, and I want to ask you, why is it important that the diaspora come home? You know why the, okay, let's use America for example, right? Because this, but we can use anywhere. Yeah. But let's just use America, right? Why do you think the Chinese American yeah, has their respect and they're not they don't go through the things that African Americans go through. Like, no, even though they might go through their struggles, I'm not taking anything away from them. But they don't go through what the African American goes through. You know why? Because the Chinese American has a base. He know he actually knows where he's from in China. Right. And they have support from the Chinese government. You understand? Mm -hmm. like, the Italian American. Italy. They know where their grandparents came from in Italy before. They know the first. But we get a little more detail into how Burner Boy viewed what he called brothers in the US. Here in an article which reads, most of the people from the UK, if not all the black people from the UK and the people of color, they all know where they're from, he says. They know exactly where their roots are. This, he says, makes it easier for people to tune into his wavelength. It took longer for his music to find an audience in the US. This, he says, is a consequence of African Americans not having the same close connection with Africa. Unfortunately, the brothers in the US have been stripped of their whole knowledge of self, he says. 
So it's a bit harder for them, you know. When he collaborated with the U.S. rappers YG and Future, he says he was bringing my brothers home. So because brothers in the U.S. don't necessarily rock with his music, or at least not as quickly as he would have liked, he ultimately blames it on the theory that it is because black Americans lack a knowledge of self, which is an interesting theory that suggests that a knowledge of self comes with a feeling of being compelled to rock with his music. Because according to Burner Boy, a close connection with Africa implies a knowledge of self. Now, he believes that most, if not all, of the black people from the UK and the people of color all know where they are from, and they all know where their roots are, which, he believes, makes it easier for people to tune into his wavelength. So he gives the benefit of the doubt of having a knowledge of self to most, if not all, black people from the UK. And if all of the black citizens of the UK are believed to know exactly where their roots are, as opposed to the black American, yet of those blacks in the UK, 800,000 of them are reportedly Jamaican or of Jamaican parentage. And Jamaica was a slave colony that disconnected their slaves from Africa. But Jamaicans from the UK are insinuated to have a knowledge of self, while only having a knowledge of Jamaican roots. Yet brothers in America are believed not to have a knowledge of self, while only having a knowledge of American roots. How is this the case? It's a simple explanation, I believe. And the reason why a Jamaican is given more the benefit of the doubt to having a knowledge of self is due to the fact that they are identified by the land from which they originate, which is Jamaica. And black Americans somehow became African Americans. Waku which causes black people from Africa to scrutinize black Americans because Africans don't see their respective cultures within black American society. So when a black American labeled themselves as African American, having not named themselves to a specific country or tribe, as do those who live in or immigrate from Africa, it causes Africans from various cultures to look upon black America and say, African American? But I don't see African culture which implies that you must not have a knowledge of self because you named yourself African without Africa as the root. Now, if Jamaicans started calling themselves African Jamaicans, and if Haitians started calling themselves African Haitians, then perhaps they too would be perceived to having a lack of knowledge of self due to their inability to point to which part of Africa justifies your usage of the name and how you identify yourself. But neither Haitians nor Jamaicans did that, nor the Dominican Republic, nor any other former slave colony in the West. Only black Americans. But why? So it might be safe to say that post-slavery, among the first fights that black American had undergone was the fight to be regarded as human. You can get the feel for this sentiment by simply reading the signs that protesters held. I am a man. Or reading the words of Sojourner Truth as she exposed the implicit bias as to what constituted a woman, according to white society. And that evidently she was not a woman in their eyes, considering that everything that was deemed to be obligated to a woman excluded her from the mix. Despite the fact that she was a woman which prompted her famous speech in 1851 that has since been titled, Ain't I a Woman? There have been many other fights spearheaded by black American society, such as the civil rights movement, desegregation and whatnot. But one of the fights that hasn't gotten as much shine as the civil rights movement did was somewhat of a silent war taking place within black society, which ultimately would impact the way black society interacted with white society. And this fight, was the fight to self-identify. Are you a Negro, Travis? No. Are you a flunky, Travis? No. What are you? I am black and beautiful. And what else are you? Are you a boy? No. What are you? Oh, man. So black society did away with the Negro as well as the colored label. The goal was basically to rid themselves of the labels that had been placed upon them by the dominant white society. 
The same society that labeled them as Negro was also the same society that reduced their humanity to a mere three-fifths. So Black America ultimately abandoned those labels but made an exception for, of course, Black. Then suddenly there was a moment where black pride emerged, which consisted of what could easily be summed up into a blatant defiance toward the expectation of assimilating into white society peacefully. So while the previous generation beat their hair into submission by using chemical relaxers in order to more closely resemble or gain more appeal from their white neighbors, the black pride generation wore afros and black fists in diametric opposition to their predecessors, who by comparison appeared to have been more subdued or eager to blend in so as not to cause discomfort in the mainstream by coming across as too black. But black pride was a slap in the face to the hair perming wannabes of yesterday. Now in the effort to blacken things up even more, dashikis and African medallions started to become a trend. Suddenly you started hearing talk about Africa and the motherland within American black society. Scholars like John Henry Clark became very popular during that time. And although he was a black American, his knowledge of African history was unparalleled. And when he spoke of Africa, he spoke in such a way that painted a picture of such historical greatness that detailed the excellence of people that reflected the same phenotypes of these exact Americans who were once thought of as only three-fifths of who they really were. And yet, here were stories of how black people built civilizations and navigated the globe, while most Europeans were convinced that the earth was flat and any attempt at navigating would result in falling off the edge of the planet. The Yosef Ben Yakanans and Ivan Van Sertimas and John Henry Clarks exposed black Americans to information that was excluded from the textbooks of the American primary educational system. So to hear the stories of the great history that had taken place in Africa and that the people within these historic events and that the builders of these great monuments and civilizations were also black, that inspired many black Americans to reach out and connect with Africa. Because from what they were hearing, Africa would be the evidence that black people are more than just three fifths of a human. They would be the evidence that destroys the depictions of a sambo promulgated by white American media. After hearing about Kemet, Shaka Zulu, Mansa Musa, and they're black just like me. Well, if it's a choice between being accepted by white American society, but also I have to protest and march 1,000 miles just so that I can sit on a bus in peace, or I can reconnect with Africa and finally be a part of my long lost people, let me reach out and claim Africa. Little did they understand that the Africa that they were learning of was the history of an Africa that was long gone. But throughout the history in America, there have always been fantasies about bridging a connection with Africa and black Americans. Not factoring in that Africa is a continent with multiple cultures and multiple countries and multiple tribes and multiple conflicts where multiple tribes don't see eye to eye. But in the effort to tear away from being defined by white society, black American leaders sought to push Africa as a point of identification. And to some, like Marcus Garvey, a new destination. And so many black Americans appeared to have a fantastic idea about somewhere in Africa, there were long lost relatives standing on the shore waiting for their kidnapped kinsmen to return from their 400 year diaspora. But many of the black people in America were ignorant to the Africans' ignorance to their plight. Um, if you don't know your history, uh, in Africa, they didn't teach about the period of enslavement of our people. They forbid, forbade us from speaking about it. They would kill people from speaking about that history. So we were not allowed for, for, for hundreds of years to speak about what was happening and to teach what was happening. So I didn't even know that the Africans that were here actually came from Africa. Many still believe that the Africans who are here are indigenous to this land because they think, well, every land has black people and white people. I guess those, are the, those lands have black people, but they're not from Africa. 
So according to this speaker, even Africans were miseducated pertaining to African history, which severely challenges the notion that a connection to Africa equates to a knowledge of self, when it is her testimony that many Africans are unaware of the true history that has taken place in Africa. And instead, many of them have been taught a fairy tale, which intentionally hid the atrocities of their predecessors, which is the poisoned root that brings shame upon their name and therefore shall not be spoken of. So is this evidence that Africans have been robbed of a knowledge of self as well? But even though this attempt to reach out to Africa was mainly a one-sided effort, that didn't stop Jesse Jackson. But I am somebody. I may be on welfare, but I am somebody. He decided that that somebody that we as black Americans were to be from that point on was African American. I'm black and beautiful. What is your nationality? My nationality is Afro American. But not everyone was a fan of Jesse Jackson and his suggestions. Jesse Jackson, keep hope alive. <laughs> I am a somebody. I am a somebody. I don't rightly know who the hell I am. However, African American still is used to this very day, mostly by people who've never set foot on the continent of Africa, and even the ones who have taken a trip to Africa are unable to point to a place of origin. And unless there were specific documents that detailed that a certain slave of a certain tribe was taken from a certain area, the most that the so-called African American can do is take an ancestry DNA test and comb through a list of various countries that pieces of your DNA has shown up in. But somehow, this inability for the black American to connect their lineage to a specific country and tribe in Africa communicates to many Africans that black Americans have no identity or are in an identity crisis, which is far from the truth. I believe the mistake that Burna Boy made was to assume that his assessment of brothers in America was the same view that Malcolm X had of black America. After all, Burna Boy did say that he wasn't saying anything different than what Malcolm X was saying. So what was Malcolm X saying? Who are you? You don't know. Don't tell me Negro, that's nothing. What were you before the white man named you a Negro? And where were you? And what did you have? What was yours? What language did you speak then? What was your name? It couldn't have been Smith or Jones or Bunch or Powell. That wasn't your name. They don't have those kind of names where you and I came from. No, what was your name? And why don't you now know what your name was then? Where did it go? Where did you lose it? Who took it? And how did he take it? What tongue did you speak? How did the man take your tongue? Where is your history? How did the man wipe out your history? How did the man, what did the man do to make you as dumb as you are right now? Malcolm X was speaking to the black Americans in reference to black Americans being defined outside of white supremacy that the names that they wore were the names of slave owners. This was the teaching of the knowledge of self, and millions of black brothers got that lesson. So just because Africans were oblivious to the knowledge of ourselves does not mean that we echo the sentiment of Africans' ignorance to the knowledge of the black American's history and knowledge of self. The problem, I believe, occurs when Africans search for their own reflection and cultural symmetry existing among a group that calls themselves African, and upon not finding it, rather than respect the uniqueness of their identity and culture, there will be those that say that the culture is non-existent and that they are in an identity crisis. But once again, the knowledge of self that Malcolm X spoke of was in reference to eradicating the miseducation and hatred of self tied to the poisonous belief that white was supreme. That very same belief that plagues many parts of Africa to this very day. The hatred of one's own skin apparently was so bad in Rwanda that they had to ban skin bleaching just to stop them from destroying themselves. This is in Africa. 
They know their roots. But do these particular individuals have a knowledge of self? Knowledge of self and knowledge of Africa are two different things. You can have a knowledge of Africa and African roots and clearly destroy the self. But because they are in Africa, they are more closely in tune with Burna Boy's wavelength, which is quite ironic. But when it comes to a knowledge of self, history, culture, and the lineage of a people, there are black Americans who in expressing their knowledge of self have come to believe that when black America classified themselves as African American, it was black America's biggest mistake. Yeah.